Hey yo, your friend the neighborhood quarter guy here, and yeah, Friday was the, you know, Thursday was the Switch presentation, and uh, I'm not really gonna give my thoughts on that because uh, that's I've got the archive of that on my Twitch channel, so if you want to see my reaction to that, go check it out there. But uh, I figured I'd like to talk about games that weren't shown at the presentation. Yeah, because Nintendo had a few things they couldn't quite cover at the press event. First off, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yep, they showed it They showed it during the initial reveal of the Switch, and uh, it is an updated port of Mario Kart 8. It's ha including all the DLC from, the, from Mario Kart 8, plus the addition of a few new characters, including Dry Bones, Dry Bowser... Wait, dry, I, forgot, I, forgot, I forgot if Dry Bowser was in, but... Bowser Jr. is back. I'm surprised he wasn't in Mario Kart 8 to begin with. Also... Capitalizing on the success of, of Splatoon and the upcoming release of Splatoon 2 on the Switch, the Inkling Boy and Girl are gonna be in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And they also showed off a Splatoon themed battle arena, which which copies one of the maps ba nearly pixel nearly pixel for pixel, which is some pretty interesting attention to detail. Oh yeah, that's right. We're finally getting a proper battle mode again. Seriously. That was one of the things about Mario Kart 8 that really dismayed me. How they pretty much neutered the battle mode by putting it on the various race courses instead of having the traditional battle mode arenas. So yeah, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe looks like it's going to be the definitive Mario Kart 8. Though I still wish we could have gotten Captain Falcon as a playable racer. I mean... We've got two F-Zero tracks as DLC in Mario Kart 8. We got the Blue Falcon. We got... A new 200cc class that's insanely fast for Mario Kart, which is basically the closest that Nintendo is going to get to F-Zero unless it makes a new F-Zero game, which, uh, seriously needs to happen. But, uh, yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe looks like it's going to be a game for fans who missed out on Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. That's coming out in April. A couple novelties, like, uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris which is basically combining Sega's Puyo Pop franchise with Tetris, obviously. That's something to look out for. Bit of a novelty for puzzle game fans like myself. Capcom's first game on the Switch is a nostalgic throwback. Ultra Street Fighter II The Final Challengers, which looks like it's going to be the definitive edition of the classic Street Fighter II, having an option for both the uh, Udon drawn HD character sprites, and the uh, originals as well. Also, it's going to have, like, a 2v1 dramatic battle mode, and the addition of Evil Ryu and Violent Ken, and from what I've been hearing, Mecha Zangief as well. I wish Capcom would... I wish Capcom would probably do more for, street, for uh, the Switch on regarding the Street Fighter's 30th anniversary, but uh, I guess this is just kind of testing the waters. Also, Arc Systems has confirmed they're working on two titles for the Switch right now already, including a Blaze Blue related title. Now, given the nature of the Blaze Blue logo that was shown on the, on the Japanese Switch site and Arc Systems Twitter, I've got a feeling that it might be Central or Fiction related, it might actually be Central Fiction Extend. Do not quote... Well, don't quote me on this. Uh, we have no confirmation on just what it is, just that a title is happening. Sonic Mania is going to be on the Switch, to the surprise of basically no one. I mean, if Project Sonic 2017 is going to be on the Switch and Sonic Mania wasn't, that would be cause for raising eyebrows. Alright, but, uh, <laughs> here's the title that really surprised me. Super Bomberman R. Yes, finally we are getting a proper Bomberman game after all this time, after Konami just sat on the franchise for, like, who knows how long. On, at least as far as consoles go, any anyway. I mean, and from what I understand, it's being co-developed by Konami and Nintendo, and the dev team is consisting of people 
who are formerly from Hudson who worked on previous Bomberman games. <laughs> it's like Nintendo walked up to Konami and said, Hey, we got a new system coming out. Hey, you know all that backlash you've been getting from the internet lately? Hey, you know all those franchises you've been sitting on or turning into pachinko machines? You know, you could actually you could actually redeem yourself in the eyes of some of your fans at least if you could at least do something with one of those franchises. If we're if we have to help you, we'll we'll do it then. Just do something. That's how it's coming off to me. Yeah. I'm one of those people who wanted to believe that something would come along to make Konami realize that how much they've been alienating their fans of late, especially considering their alienation, their seeming alienation of Hideo Kojima. And uh, I want to support Super Bomberman R to send a message to Konami that yes, gamers still care about console games, and this is the kind of game that they should be continuing to make. That they shouldn't be just sitting on their franchises for no reason. And uh, considering that uh, the uh, eight-player local multiplayer capacity of the Switch, which, by the way, is basically a... It's, it's got... It seems like it's got handheld specs, which is... From what I hear, some people are saying it's meant to compete with the Vita in Japan, because... The Vita is still popular in Japan, despite the fact that it's essentially dead in the U.S., from what I understand. So, the eight-player capacity for the Switch, eight-player local multiplayer Bomberman battles, I'd say that's going to be a good time. I just hope this game is good. Anyways, a uh, few updates before I move on. You see the, uh, let's see, uh, my lines are recorded for my QG Talks. I'm just waiting on some art. Um, this Saturday is going to be another stream session. I'm probably going to be switching into rhythm games this time, playing some Hatsune Miku Future Tone. And that's all I got for now. Question of the week. Have you ever bought a console at launch? As always, leave your comments in the... Well, as always, leave your answers in the comments below. Favorite comments will be featured in the next episode. Here are last week's winners. And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. As always, to send me your questions via YouTube messages, cl click the About tab on my channel, click the Send Message button, and send me your questions. I'll answer my favorites on the next episode. First question this week comes from Tykeman128, who asks, Have you ever planned on doing a countdown about Overwatch? That's something I've considered, something I've considered doing at some point. However, I would have to, that would have to wait until I played enough Overwatch to really get an impression of all the heroes in the game. Because that's probably the topic I would do, because, well, that's probably the big thing about Overwatch, besides its art style and the lore it's building, is the characters themselves. I've been hearing a, a good things about the roster as a whole, saying that while there are characters who are, are objectively better than others, that at least every character is at least somewhat viable, so that's a good thing to think about. And they got, and they just got some good personality, to be honest. But once I've played more Overwatch, I'll definitely consider it. I'll keep it in my back pocket for then. Next question comes from Omega Seven One Seven One, who asks: If League of Legends champions had Pokemon types, what type would your favorite champions be? I could probably think of. I could probably think of three or four. Darius would probably be a Steel type. Lux would most likely be Fairy because she has the whole magical girl theme going on. Um, let's see, Lucian maybe a normal type. I don't know. Uh, Aatrox would definitely be dark. Maybe a little poison in there as well. Vladimir would probably also be a poison type. But that's all I can think of among my favorite champions off the top of my head. Next question comes from Ludger's channel, who asks, Are you excited for Tales of Berseria? Hi, I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. 
game looks good. Velvet looks like a badass character. But I've got some catching up to do on the Tail series. I'm sitting on Zillia 1 and 2 on my PS3 right now. They're in my backlog, and I hate having RPGs in my backlog because RPGs as a whole take longer to play than play through than tradition than other genres for the most part, so I've got some catching up to do before I even think about playing Berseria. Though I hear Zestereo is just kinda meh. Next question comes from Elm the Ultimate Gamer, who asks, What are your thoughts on the Digimon franchise? To be honest, Digimon never really caught my attention all that much. I know it, I know there are plenty of fundamental differences between Digimon and Pokemon. That's not my issue with it. It just... For some reason, it just didn't appeal to me like Pokemon did. Nothing against it, but... Just... Doesn't strike a chord with me. Sorry. Last question this week comes from Tim5FL, who asks, Who is the one popular YouTuber you couldn't care less about? PewDiePie. <laughs>